Hello to you. Let's learn about the monopsony market structure. Okay, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit different there. A little bit different spelling. It's got mono on the front, so it does mean a single, uh, but it's it's a little bit different. Okay, so I had a bunch of a couple of clips there that uh, that show monopsonies uh, of varying degrees of complexity. Uh, way to think about this. Uh, let's think back to 1960. Right, so the dawn of the space race, and uh, NASA is a is a buyer of a uh, rocket system, right? So they're going to say to all the sellers, we're going we want to buy a rocket system. You need to design the rocket system and then give us a price, okay? So what NASA's going to do is uh, they're the single buyer, so they're going to find the one that they like the best or or give specifications and then say that they want it at this price and it's up to the firms to try to hit that price, right? And there's a bidding process, but NASA's going to get a really good deal here because NASA's the the only buyer here. So that's, that's essentially what a monopsony is. You've got a single buyer with uh, considerable buying power, and there's a bunch of sellers, and the sellers are going to have to try to uh, sell at that lower price. Right? Another example, uh, exotic fish. Right? There's not a lot of purchasers for exotic fish. You know, those big-time aquariums um, tend to buy those fish, and uh, they're able to, to knock the price down because there's not as many uh, for that. It's, not a very common market structure, but essentially you got many sellers, one buyer. Uh, the it's it's easy to enter the supply market, but be, but either because the product is super expensive and only you know a government or a you know huge corporation like Google or something like that uh, could purchase, you're you're not going to have very many sellers. Okay, so it might be a very specialized product that only one firm has a use for, right, or one community. As a use for, okay, like in the 60s, you know, there was no European Space Agency. There was, you know, there was the Soviet Union, but they they weren't uh, um, uh, a competitive market, right? So bigger the firm, more buying power, uh, and it means lower prices for the buyer, right? So market share is very important here, okay? Uh, good example here in Arizona, towns like Winkleman, Morency, and Bisbee, uh, they were single buyers of labor. Right, so they were the only place you could work, and back in uh, quote the good old days, it's not like you could just up and move across the country. You didn't, you know, the credit market wasn't as easy, so you could basically only work for that one uh, firm in that labor market. And the firm, of course, is going to keep wages low because you know what else are you going to do? Right, they're the best game in town. Okay, uh, baseball players before 1974, uh, they were engaged in a monopsony. Uh, environment. There was no free agency and no trades. They had to work for whoever drafted them or they could quit playing baseball. Okay. Uh, after 1974, the baseball players won free agency and they were able to uh, choose where they go after a certain period, period of time. And so this player salary is a percentage of team revenue. So before uh, free agency, players only earned about 16% of team revenue. So if the team you know, made ten million dollars a year. Uh, they only got uh, one point six in terms of player salary, and then by nineteen ninety eight, they were getting close to half. Okay, and the the different leagues, you know, that that relationship changed uh, a little bit. But baseball is the classic example. Uh, the owners were basically uh, operating in unison. They were lowering the prices for the baseball player wage, and the baseball players there was nothing they could do about it. Free agency allowed them to break that up. Okay. Uh, a lot of people right now think that Amazon has monopsony power over books. Okay, they they have about seventy percent of the book market. Whether that's a monopsony or not, uh, it's up for uh, antitrust legislators to to think about and economists to think about. Uh, but Amazon's able to say to a publisher, you know, we're not going to buy at that price. We're going to buy at this lower price, closer to marginal cost, and they spin it as it's the best for the consumer. It is pretty good for the consumer. But it does give them a very powerful position uh, over the authors, right? There's lots of authors, lots of publishers. You know, Amazon's has a 70% market share, right? Walmart might make a similar argument on clothing and goods. They they're one of the top retailers in the world. Walmart's, of course, going to say, well, you know, there's Amazon too, and we lower prices for our customers. But the sellers are going to say, well, you know, we can't really make as good of a profit because we kind of have to sell to Walmart for this lower lower price. Uh, this is the idea behind uh, single-payer health care in the United Kingdom, right? If there's one firm that's uh, paying the doctors, that one firm can keep the costs lower, 
right? And then that's more access to care, okay? I'm not saying whether that's good or bad, it just is a different market structure than what we have here, okay? So some people think that's great and we should bring it to the United States. Other people think, oh, eh, maybe people get into medicine to make more money, right? So there you go, okay? Economies of scale, again, are important. And um, of course, what could sellers do to increase their price? Well, they could, they could band together. If it's a labor market, they're gonna unionize. If it's uh, you know, publishers, they might band together to try to create some kind of monopoly, uh, some kind of co-op or something like that. Okay, you see this stuff uh, pop up quite a bit. So Time Warner and Comcast were considering a merger a couple years ago, and uh, the FTC got worried, the Justice Department got worried. Basically, they were saying that Comcast would have too much monopsony power over the channels. They could tell the channels, you know, you'll sell to us at this lower price, and uh, because we, we're the biggest game in town. There's a pretty good uh, quote here. It says, uh, you can't launch a new channel without Comcast, right? If you're not on Comcast, you're in big trouble. Uh, you won't make a profit. And so Com this gives Comcast enough power to say uh, that we're only going to buy the channel at this, this incredibly, well, relatively lower price. Okay, so that is monopsony power. And later on in the course, we'll, uh, we'll look at the monopsony graph. Uh, but I think that's enough graphing for this week. Thank you.